What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Latte Panda Sigma. And when it comes down to it, this is the most insane single board computer they've ever created. And it's definitely the most powerful Latte Panda on the market so far. Because with this, we've got a 12 core, 16 thread CPU up to 4.6 gigahertz and 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 running at 6400 megahertz. And this release from Latte Panda was kind of a surprise release because usually they do post a few months or maybe even a few weeks in advance. And actually the last board they released, the Latte Panda Alpha, they ran a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo for it. But this one kind of just showed right up on my radar and I knew I had to get my hands on it. Some of the cool new features here with the Sigma is they've added two Thunderbolt 4 ports, plus we can add up to three NVMe SSDs. We've got three slots here, which does make it a lot larger than the other Latte Pandas they've released. But compared to larger desktops or even some of the mini PCs on the market right now, it's still a relatively small unit. So yeah, I'm really excited about testing out the new Sigma, but first things first, let's see what comes with this unit. Looks like we get a 90 watt power supply and a few different power adapters for around the world. Got a bag of small accessories. Looks like we have a little power button there, a couple extra screws here and there. And they've also included a few extra thermally conductive pads for our M.2 drives that we can add to this unit. And of course, the Sigma itself. Taking a closer look here, now the uh, overall SBC itself is relatively small. I think what adds a little beef to it is the heatsink on the bottom. And this is here to help cool off those NVMe drives we can add here. Like I mentioned, we've got three slots here. So, you know, adding three drives to this can generate some heat. We've got that aluminum heatsink right here on the bottom to keep them nice and chilly. First thing I noticed here was the abundant I.O. Now we've got a lot more than the Alpha, the Delta, or even the original Latte Pan. I kind of expected this. Over here on this side, we've got our GPIO layout. Plus, we've got a COM port, front panel port, and a front audio port. So I'm sure they're going to be coming up with a case for this later on down the road. But this also supports a SATA drive. We've got a power adapter here. You can buy a separate cable. It didn't come included with the kit. But we've got that SATA port here, so we can add way more storage to this. Taking a look at the front of the board, and I'm going to call this the front because we do have our power button over here. Two full-size USB 2.0 ports, and moving down just a little bit, our Thunderbolt 4 port. Remember, we've got two here, so there's one around back, but these are both 40 gig ports, so we can add eGPUs and really fast storage to this unit. You may have noticed it comes with a pre-installed heatsink, and with this we've got a blower-style heatsink. This CPU will do up to 44 watts, and that's the base TDP that it's set up at out of the box. But of course, we can go up from there using a third-party application. I'm going to keep it at 44 watts just to see what this can do. And in my next video, we will take it up and kind of push this thing to the limit. And of course, moving around back, we've got a 3.5 millimeter stereo headphone jack, dual USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, a full-size HDMI 2.1 port, so we can do 4K60 out of this unit, our second Thunderbolt 4 port, and our 5.5mm DC jack-in for the included 90-watt power supply. The bottom heat plate can be removed very easily with four screws from the top, and now you can see we've got our Wi-Fi pre-installed. This is Wi-Fi 6 along with Bluetooth 5.2. And we've also got those three M.2 slots for storage. We've got an M2 E key. This will support a 2230 M.2 and it runs at PCIe 3.0. We've got an M key slot that supports 2280 millimeter NVMEs and this is PCIe 4.0. And the final one here is the same 2280, but it's PCIe 3.0. So in total, with no USB storage on this device, we could have three M.2 SSDs and a SATA drive connected to this at the same time. One of the first things I wanted to test with the Sigma was single cable operation mode. This monitor puts out 65 watt PD, so I've got it plugged into one of the Thunderbolt ports, and obviously Thunderbolt 4 is going to do video out, so a single cable here for a power in and video out. Really handy. And when it comes to the main specs, the Latte Panda Sigma is rocking the new Intel i5-1340P. So we've got a 13th gen Intel CPU here with 12 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.3 gigahertz, and a boost up to 4.6. Along with that, we get those built-in Iris Xe graphics with 80 execution units up to 1.45 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM at 6400 megahertz running in dual channel, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and of course we've got those two 40 gig Thunderbolt 4 ports which could definitely play a big role in upping the GPU performance by connecting an external GPU to this thing for sure. And this is capable of running Windows 10, 11, or Linux. 
In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Windows 11 performance. And by the way, I do have a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Black NVMe SSD installed here, and I'm updated, ready to go. All right, so here it is. And yeah, this is definitely a fast little single board computer. I kind of expected it to be, given that we have that new 13th Gen i5, but uh, as you can see, we've got that 1340p, 12 cores, 16 threads, and it is dual channel RAM. This is really important for those integrated graphics running at 6400 megahertz. And of course, the 80 EU Iris XE. So over on their website, they state that this will do up to 44 watts. Now, one thing you got to keep in mind with that 1240p, it's actually rated up to 64 by Intel. So there is more that we can get out of this board. I looked at the BIOS. We do kind of have a fully unlocked BIOS here. Didn't mess around with any of the settings because I wanted to see the stock configuration. And we're right there at 40 watts. So running that stress test, you'll see right here, 38 watts. And if I put a little load on that GPU, it'll jump up to around 44, 45 watts. Not bad for what we have. And the built-in cooler can keep up with this kind of TDP. And I'm pretty sure we could get away with a little more out of it. But uh, we're going to stick right here just to see what it'll do out of the box. Web browsing is going to be super snappy here. We'll just head over to the Latte Panda Sigma web page, kind of an overview. Everything loads right up. Uh, we can scroll on down. And I'll leave a link for this website in the description so you can check this thing out. But yeah, right here. Up to 44 watts with the built-in cooler they have. This is just how they have it set in the BIOS right now. And uh, lots of great information over here. Everything you basically need to know about this. And these chips will do 4K video playback really well. I've had amazing luck with Intel from 11th gen up to 12th. And now we're on 13th. So we got to make sure we're at 4K, turn stats for nerds on, full screen it, 4K, 60, HDR. Drop frames are going to be listed right up here. And with 4K 60 video playback, this doesn't pull over 15 watts total from the wall. It's actually a pretty power efficient little chip, these newer ones, but they can draw some wattage when you need them to. So looking at setting up a little media center, not going to have an issue with it. Whether you want to run something like Netflix or even a little Plex server with this, we've got a lot of storage options that we can use. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks that I ran on this unit. First one here is Geekbench 6, single core 2,213, multi 9,283. Looking really good on single and multi with the new Geekbench 6. 3D Mark for the built-in iGPU, Wildlife 12,483, Night Raid 17,031. And the final one I ran here was Firestrike. These built-in Intel Iris Xe graphics fall far behind newer Radeon RDNA 2 and RDNA 3, but it uh, doesn't mean we can't game on it, so let's go ahead and check out some gaming and emulation. Here's Fallout 4, 1080p, low, and you'll see my character running a little fast. I do have a mod on, just kind of a speed mod to get across really quickly. But yeah, I mean, it's not bad. We're not quite at a steady 60. If we drop this down to 900p, we could do it. Next up, we've got CSGO 1080p low, and after I was finished with this, Afterburner said that I had an average of 123 FPS, but you'll see it drop under 100 every once in a while. It's not horrible, and you know, locking this down at 60, you could have a really good experience with it. OG Skyrim 1080p low. I think we could go up to a low medium mix with this. I've been able to do that on 12th gen with their Intel Iris Xe graphics, but we're right there at 60 and I could definitely play through this if I needed to. And the final PC game we're testing here on the iGPU is Doom Eternal 720p low with dynamic resolution scale on. Dynamic resolution scale is going to be your best friend on these integrated graphics, but even then, you know, trying to get a steady 60 out of it, it's really not going to do it. You'll have those dips under 60. So this was all on the iGPU, and we'll take a look at an eGPU over Thunderbolt 4 in a second, but I did want to test out some emulation. And first on the list, we've got PS2 using PCSX2, 1080p, Vulcan back in. Great performance here, Gran Turismo 4 running at full speed, and we've got plenty of CPU power here for these emulators. 
even a harder to emulate game like God of War 2 with these same settings, 1080p, Vulcan back in, is going to run at full speed. So let's take it up a bit to PS3. And here's Demon Souls using RPCS3 720p Vulcan back in. This is one of those games that natively ran at 30 FPS. And of course, there are mods to unlock this going up to 60, but I left it here kind of at the stock configuration. With these easier to emulate games on the iGPU, you should have a great time with PS3. And the final one I wanted to test here was Switch using the Yuzu emulator. Games pretty decently, but there's a lot of graphics performance that we can unlock here using an eGPU over Thunderbolt 4. I've got my uh, Razer dock here, which actually does put out 100 watt PD charging, so it'll power the board, and we can also use Thunderbolt there with this 3080 Ti. Go ahead and boot it up. All I need is that single cable. HDMI from the graphics card is going to the monitor now. As you can see, the fans on the eGPU dock and the GPU have spun up, and uh, it's pretty cool having that PD out of these eGPUs. A lot of the cheaper ones do around 30 to 65, and that should get you by with the Sigma, but this does 100 watt, bring us right into Windows. And now, instead of using those built-in graphics, we've still got that 1340p, as you can see here, but we've got an RTX 3080 Ti connected to the Latte Panda Sigma. And if you remember, on the iGPU, we did test out Doom Eternal, but we had to set it to low 720p with dynamic resolution scale on. And even then, we couldn't really get a constant 60 out of it. But now we're at 1440p, ultra, getting over 100 FPS. And if you're not familiar with Thunderbolt eGPUs, we're not going to get the max performance out of this 3080 Ti. It's definitely overkill. This is what I already had set up in the dock. I would recommend something like a 3060 non-Ti variant. It works great for 1080p gaming using Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. Overall, really having a great time with this board. There's a lot more that I want to test with it, and I will have more videos on the way. Uh, Thunderbolt eGPUs are pretty awesome, but there's another way to do it. We can actually use Oculink over M.2, and since we've got that PCIe 4.0 slot on the bottom, I think I'm going to do a video on that and just show you the difference. From what I've tested so far with an Oculink setup, I've just had a much more smoother experience, and uh, we can get a little more bandwidth out of it at least, you know, a constant bandwidth to get better performance out of our eGPU. So definitely keep an eye on the channel if you're interested in seeing a video like that. And in that video, I'll have more data about total system power consumption and things like that. We're also going to try to up the TDP on this. But so far, really powerful little board. And it is the most powerful Latte Panda so far. And I'd expect the next one to release would actually outperform this. That's how it works. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video at the Latte Panda Sigma. If you're interested in learning more or maybe even picking one up, I'll leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this board, be it more applications, more benchmarks, more PC games running on the iGPU or external GPUs, just let me know down below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.